corner flip card. Sometimes it's called a folded corner because you fold it down, but then there is a little flip to it. So stay tuned and learn how to do this really cute corner flip card. If you really like the video, please give me a thumbs up down below and check out the description for more information. And if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be yours. So be in touch. You can go to my blog, stampwithlorraine.com and email me through there or sign up for my mailing list so we can stay in touch. What we're going to do today is, has a couple different names. It's sometimes called a folded corner card or um, a flipped corner card. And it's basically where this is going to contain your focal point. So you can handle your focal point however you want. I just used a DSP on this one as an example. You can stamp it. You can um, put die cuts on there. So we're going to play around with some different options. When you open it up, you actually see the inside of this. And it has this cute little fold. And the white is the background backdrop here. And you have a little something inside. I just thought this looked a little too plain. So... Um, so the idea to put something on the inside there and bring some of that pattern back inside. So a flipped corner or a folded corner card, that's what we're doing today. So I'm going to use the Whale of a Time 6x6 six six designer paper. This has the whales here, which coordinates with the punch, the whale punch. And it has all these different sea themes, some seahorses, jellyfish, schools of fish, just some fish scales, some, a lot of vibrant colors, some sea themes. I mean, it's kind of nice for scrapbooking. If anybody's a scrapbooker you, or just doing some wall art, you can put these in a frame with some die cuts and uh, sentiment and you have a nice um, little wall hanging. Okay, so we're going to use Just Jade. Eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. And a piece of designer paper that will fill that whole piece right there. So we're going to attach that right away. Okay. And then other pieces you will need, a piece of white for the inside. So that's your layer, both the designer paper and the white is going to be four by five and a quarter just to leave that little bit of a border. Both of those are the same size. And then you're going to need a piece of DSP that is two and three quarters square. Two and three quarters by two and three quarters. And then something that will mat with that and leave just a little bit of a border. So that's two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. Because then the part we flip is going to be three inches, so that's going to give us those tiny little borders, those little mat um, pieces showing through. Okay, so here's where you need to bring your paper trimmer in. Okay. This little post-it note isn't necessary, but it helps give a little visual. So I'm going to just align this on the top corner here. This is a three by three post-it note line it right up to the edge and it's going to be just a little bit of a guide to help you understand or remind you where we're going to cut okay so we're actually going to cut along this red line but not on the edges up here five eighths is what we're going to leave and we're just going to cut here and here so let me show you how to do that we're going to go in three inches from the top of the card to here. So on your paper trimmer, we're going to align that up to three inches. This could actually be a little bit up. Now, if you want, you can cut it with the post-it note on here, or you can remove it once you kind of know where you're at. Okay, so it wouldn't hurt to you can just cut along here. You might cut a little bit of the post-it note, but um, okay, if you want, you can just pull that off just in the meantime, so I will. And so you're going to 
you're coming in three inches here and you're going to go down three inches over here. Let me just show you one more time. Down here, from here to here is three inches. So we're gonna cut, we're gonna start cutting at the three inch mark. And I'm gonna put a little piece of paper under here so it might be a little easier to see the measurements because against the designer paper, those numbers are a little bit hard to see. I'm gonna start at the three inch mark right here. I'm gonna stop at five eighths up at the top. So I have my cutter right there. Now remember you're going through two thicknesses. So you wanna give it a little bit of a push to get it started. You can feel it sink in there and then you wanna press pretty hard to go up to five eighths. See, I can't see this with that paper that I have behind there. So I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna stop at five eighths. So that's just a little bit more than half an inch. All right, okay, I could feel that cut all the way through. So now we're gonna take that apart. We wanna do the same thing. This is again, if you wanna just put your post-it note there to have a guide, you wanna do it on this side now. All right, so this way, so I can measure three inches from here. So your card is actually upside down to you because you wanna go three inches in from the edge, not the folds. Three inches in, and we're going to put this under here so we can see. Now, if you think about it, do the math a little bit or just use this as your guide, that's okay too. Um, if your card is five and a half, you're going up three inches from here. So from five and a half to four and a half, to two and a half, and then, I mean, three and a half and two and a half. So you will actually start at two and a half. So like the um, carpenters say, you know, think it out multiple times and cut once because <laughs> there's no going back. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna start right there. I'm gonna push that down and we're gonna go from five and a half to four and seven eighths, that's five eighths there. Okay, so I'm gonna come down, leaving that five eighths of an inch. And make sure you've gone through. So when you're done, you're going to have a slit that looks like this. Okay. So leaving that five eighths here because we want that part to stay attached, we're not totally cutting this off. And now here's where the little flip comes in. Let me get the trimmer out of the way. And we're going to push this part toward the inside, gently working this to fold here. Okay, so very carefully, you wanna flip it. And start encouraging that little diagonal fold. And don't crease it tight until you've noticed that this is straight. Let me put my white in there. See, I started folding it, but I'm noticing it's a little crooked, so I'm going to work it a little bit so that it will be straight. Straight meaning parallel to the rest of the car. Okay, so there we go. And I'm going to use my bone folder to create that little twist, so to speak, there. All right. So you want it to make sure that's nice and parallel. Now, my trimmer could use a new blade because this is a little bit rough here, but okay, definitely make sure those creases are good. All right. And then we're going to mount our contrasting color and our designer paper on there. Okay, so now my turtles are my little focal point. You could just leave it as it is and put your sentiment there. I'm going to put just a little something else down there. And I'm going to take a little piece of designer paper and I'm just going to attach that there to make a little band to go across the bottom.
Then we're going to glue that onto the card. I'm going to use um, what I used once before. I think I showed you how I took this happy birthday and I cut it in half so I could make it look more like this, one on top of the other. And it fits that oval very nicely. So that's the double oval punch, which is here. And that would fit in the small one as well. And if I wanted to, I could then mat it with something else. So let's go for it. Let's, let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to use, let's try Knight of Navy, maybe, just to make it dark, but stay in the blue family. I'll get that happy birthday on there. I'm going to put that down to the oval, but I see I should have gone a little bit lower on the paper, so I'm just going to trim a little of this off so it fits into that oval better. Just a little until, there we go. Oops, that's better. Okay, so that can go on there. That kind of looks okay just like that too, but let's just punch out a scallop and see if we like that. Don't know if it'll be too much of the misty moonlight, but we can just cut some of that and see, see what we think. Okay, and then what do we pop this up with? Conventionals. Two fit on here just fine. Then we could pop that on there. Okay, now this flap has to be glued down. So you want to be careful though, not to get glue on the inside here. All right, well, look here. This is something that I didn't anticipate. This pattern has a definite up and down. So when it gets flipped, it's going sideways, but hopefully my recipient won't notice that or care so much. Something to think about, make a note. <laughs> All right, so we're going to put adhesive just along the edge here so that it catches this part here. Okay, just along the edge because we don't want any of it popping through to the inside of the car. So use something strong, either the glue or, um, Stamp and seal is nice and strong, or the seal plus. Okay, that's awfully cute. And we could bring in our inside. Of course, you can stamp a little something down there. Maybe I'll put a little bit of seagrass just to bring in that theme. I'll do that in just J. go. Adorable. Flip up my pad. Glue that down. Okay. Then if you wanted to put a little something here, you could. So like I did on this one, this was particularly plain. So I thought it looked nice having something there. The two circles from the um, layering circles dies. So you can stamp something or just cut out some other designer paper just to add a little interest on the inside if you like. Make it another square maybe, the scallop square. So um, stitch shapes which might be nice to do a little something else in there to keep the square going. So whatever you like. Okay, so isn't that cute? Very cute. So you can make this, like I said, you can make your focal point whatever you want. You can stamp something. You can use your punches. I was thinking for my next version of this card using, this is from the um, 
the flowers for every season paper with all those floral prints and a lot of different colors. So that's what the roses were from, poppies and roses in there it looks like. And so I use the yellow because I wanted to bring in the daisy. Like I said, you can maybe bring in this little daisy and add it to there. So um, I thought that could be fun. Um, you know what? I'll do it real quick so you get an idea. Let's take a contrasting color. Four by five and a half. Glue it on there. Okay, so now this pattern in the back is more random. There is no real up and down to it. Oh, this one rather. This is what's going to show through on the back. So let's just do that and I'll show you again how to cut that corner with your trimmer. Use this as your guide if you like. Always helps. Okay, measure three inches in. Set it up here. And start at five and a uh, five eighths of an inch. I have to see my numbers. I'll start at three and then go up to five eighths. And like I said, if you want, you can leave that there. That's fine. Go up to five eighths. So just a little more than your half inch. Okay, so it's okay. Took off a little of that post-it. That's okay. Then turn it so the top of the card is facing you. Measure it three inches in. And we're going to start at that three inches um, down from the top of the card. So we said that was two and a half inches. Let's see here. And then go to four and seven eighths. Oops. Make sure you hold it. <laughs> okay, there you go. Have that, then you're gonna flip it. Oops, see, I told you I need a new blade. Okay, see? It's a little rough there, so I'll just trim that with my scissors. And I'll bring that in like that. Okay, so I can't wait to see what some of you end up doing. Leave that tiny little border there. Then I'm going to glue that down and add my daisy to it. I'll add my sentiment later. You got the idea, right? Remember, just on the edge, or you can put it on the edge here, whatever you're more comfortable doing. And I shared this little trick for some flower centers, whether it is um, a little flower, like the small bloom punch, or these daisies. I didn't want to necessarily use the actual stamp for these. I want to keep them more white. So use your pencil eraser. Okay, I saw another demonstrator do this and I thought it was a great idea. So um, I appreciate uh, Connie's idea there. And just tap that onto your ink pad and you will see you get a nice little circle there. So make sure it's a brand new eraser, nice straight and flat and clean edges there. So I'm just going to do that in the middle of my daisy. Look how cute. And then you can just clean that off like you would your stamps. Clean that on your chamois. Not too hard. You don't want to ruin that nice flat edge. And I'm going to use my blending brush just to add a little bit of color to the middle. I'm going to make sure I don't have too much on there. Just going to add just a touch. Before layering them together. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, so just a little bit of, of a glow of the yellow. And then dimensionals. Okay, so how cute, right? So like I said, decorate that however you like. If you want to tie a ribbon around the de uh, desired paper here, you could do that too. I'll add a little something later, a little sentiment on there, and then I'll post that. All right, so hope you enjoyed that little technique. Here are the three cards again. Okay, so enjoy. So aren't these fun to do? I'm so glad you watched to the end and learned to how you can do some of your own designs. Kids cards, flowery cards, you can even make masculine cards. You can stamp, you could use DSP, whatever you like, but make it your own and have fun with that. So please share what you do. You can share some of your information on my Facebook page, Stamp with Lorraine. And if you want, you can share it to my blog as well. So hope you stay in touch and see you soon. Bye-bye now.